Welcome to Goldfish on Games, where I want to talk about one of the unsung heroes of the channel, my Amiga 1200. As almost all Amiga game footage that I record comes from this machine, and I figured it was time for it to shine in front of the camera for once. Now it's not the most extremely upgraded machine ever, I just like to make my hardware easier to use. Now I got this Amiga around 2004-2005 from an online mate who needed to get rid of it as it was just taking up space. This was pretty much at a time where Amigas were worth absolutely nothing, so it was either a case of give it away or bin it. Oh how times have changed. As we've seen the case and keyboard are pretty much stock UK with a branding that indicates that it's an Commodore unit rather than an SCOM one. Now along the back we find the standard ports, we have power, video and audio, which was sensibly moved next to the video after being so far away on the 500, but if we go past those other ports we find something next to the joystick ports. This is normally a door that can be removed that has nothing behind it, and now it has a slot for a compact flash card, which we'll see more of once we get inside. So let's open it up, and while we do that, for those who don't know the Amiga 1200 was released in 1992, and it was a bit of a late upgrade for the Amiga line, but it did include a newer CPU, more RAM and an upgraded graphics chip. Now I have to say back in the day when I had my Amiga 500 Plus, I really did want one of these. And as we carefully take off the top, making sure not to pull on the LED cable, as that has seen a few repairs over the years, we unplug the keyboard and the LED connector. And with all of that out of the way, we can finally see the inside of this machine. And there's a number of upgrades that you can see straight away. Inside the expansion bay, we have the ACA 1221, which was a cheap but not all that well loved RAM and CPU upgrade. As sold, it had 9 megabytes of RAM and it had a full 6820 CPU running at 70 megahertz, which was a step up from the cut down 68EC20 CPU that was running in the original 1200. And those 9 megabytes of fast RAM was more than enough for most things that I was going to be doing on the 1200. Now the issue for most people was this card actually had 64 megabytes of RAM built in, and the CPU could be clocked all the way up to 28 megahertz. But to do that, you needed to buy a software license. For me, the stock amounts were more than enough, and the card was much cheaper than others that were around at the time. And it was about £65 back in 2016. But in some point in the last five years, it somehow managed to unlock itself so I actually have the full RAM and CPU speed if I need it. Now I'm not entirely sure how that happened as I don't recall ever paying for it, but there it is. Next to it, I have upgraded the machine to Kickstart 314, and while this wasn't needed, there are a few nice improvements over the stock 3 that I had in there before. I'm also running Workbench 314 on this as well, but we'll get into that when we have a look at the software in a bit. I also have a clock upgrade installed, again not really needed, but it was easy to fit and cheap enough so I decided why not. Now outside of the ACA board, one of the best upgrades you can do to your Amiga is to add a hard drive to it, and in this instance I'm running a 4GB compact flash card, and you might have noticed that the cable continues along the board. We find the second compact flash card reader that showed up through the slot on the back. Normally I have a 16GB card connected in here, and I can actually use both of them at the same time. It means I can easily add new files to the external card though you have to keep in mind that it's not really hot swappable. Typically you'll find that people will use the PCM CIA slot for that, and I actually do have a card and converter. The problem is the port got damaged, so it's out of action till either I repair it, or I send it off to be fixed. And to be honest, I'm more likely to send it off at some point, as it could also do with being recapped. And while I can do recaps on simpler hardware, I really don't want to risk the 1200. Most of the time this machine is connected to the OSSE, so I can record it for a video. But when it's not, you can expect to find it connected to the Commodore 1084 SD1 monitor, 
which really could do with the full recap as well, as uh, just watch the image as the brightness changes. And as you can imagine, if I don't want to recap my Amiga, I really don't want to mess around with the insides of this thing. I really do not have that level of confidence in my own abilities. As for input, we have a few options. For joysticks, I use a mix of the Speed King joystick, which has two buttons which are independent, so it can be used by those games that support two buttons, and the whole thing is micro-switched. Just listen to that. But for the later games, I also have the CD32 controller, which is fully supported by the system. For the mouse, I also have a few options. I have a small converter that allows me to use a USB mouse, which has worked absolutely great over the years, but if I wanted that classic feel, I could use a tank mouse with a ball, which I have to say I don't really use all that often, but what I do tend to use now is this tank mouse that has been upgraded with an optical sensor. It looks completely stock on top, but flip it over and you can see the sensor. It's a wonderful little kit and has worked absolutely great for me. And that is pretty much the hardware side of things. It's not completely loaded up, and it doesn't have the most insane upgrades ever, but it has exactly what I need. And to me, this is mostly used for gaming and showing off those games. So let's check out the software side of things, and it boots straight into Workbench, which I mentioned earlier is 3.1.4. Now interestingly, 3.2 was just announced as I was making this video, so I'm definitely not up to date anymore. And will I upgrade it? Possibly, but at the moment I'm actually quite happy with what I've got and I actually installed this straight from the floppy disks that were provided. But if you don't like that route, there are pre-prepared kits like Classic Workbench. These are pretty good as they provide a whole bunch of software and UI mods straight out of the gate. But I am actually a big fan of the stock Workbench look, as you can tell. Now there are some changes if you've never seen anything above Workbench 3. These include those bars at the side that show how full the drives are, or being able to clean up by various criteria, not just whatever Workbench decided. To be honest, this change alone might be worth the upgrade. There was also support for larger hard drives, which is why I can have that 16GB card connected. And there's also a bunch of smaller fixes that just help the whole thing shine just a little bit more. And you should also have noticed the tools that I have running, including having the clock just sitting up there, as well as having a tools menu added, which lets me quickly access the shell, directory opus, or even a text editor. Now the text editor is even set up that I can click on a file, then select it off the menu and it will open that file, which makes editing those startup files so much easier. Which as we can see, I've got and click started, so I don't have to hear that drive constantly going away. The other improvement of upgrading from Kickstart 3 is the fact that RAM is also auto added. Before that, I had to run the ACA Tune program for the memory to be recognised. Now you might have wondered why I needed a 16GB card. Well the answer is WHD load. Whenever anyone has a large hard drive connected to the Amiga, the answer is almost always WHD load. It's a great bit of software that means devs can write patch files for games. One of the main uses for this is to allow the games to be run from a hard drive, hence the name as many of these games were designed to only run from a floppy disk. But it can also include updating the game so it can run on the 1200, as not all games did. You can redirect the saves to go to the hard drive. You can remove copy protection. Others have added trainers that give you unlimited lives or let you select any level. Or there's even support for light guns in some games that didn't originally support it. And while I'd love to run all my games from floppy disk, or install them directly to the hard drive if they supported that, it's not always practical, as I found the floppy drive to be a little bit inconsistent. Some days it will just read everything I put in, other days it will just click and refuse. Plus not all the disks are in that great a condition. So running the WHD load version does save a bit of wear and tear on the media, plus it tends to load a bit faster which is always a nice added bonus. And as you can imagine using Workbench, as well as this software can use a chunk of RAM, this is the main reason that most people buy memory upgrades. And having that CPU that can go double the original speed can really bring some of those later games to life. 
but it is still limited to that AGA chipset and the Paula for audio, which does become a bit of a bottleneck for those later 3D games. But ones like Genetic Species seem to support everything. It uses a special library for sound which supports different sound cards as well as the Paula. It supports RTG graphics cards and AGA graphics. And if you throw more CPU power at it, which thankfully I can, it's almost playable with the medium settings. Back when I got this 1200, I was actually considering doing one of those tower case mods for it, as I thought the Amiga 1200 tower was such a great looking machine. I'm a bit of a sucker for a computer with a door, and if it has a frosted panel on the front, all the better. That fell through, so I stuck the machine on the back burner for ages. Now these days I'm a bit mixed on whether or not that would have been a good idea, as it just being an all-in-one does make it easier to bring out and put away. But not having to use the Amiga 500 power supply, mostly because it's that big unit that provides lots of amps on the rails, it would have been quite nice. So this is a bit of a shorter one this week, but hopefully you've enjoyed seeing my Amiga 1200 take centre stage for once. And until next time, I was the Goldfish, that was the real workhorse of the channel, and this was Goldfish on Games. Thank you for watching my video, I do hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, you can let me know down in the comments, or you can use those buttons just below, you know the ones I mean. Or if you're not sure yet, then you can check out two other videos that I've done that are on the screen right now. So thank you again, and I hope to see you soon.